Amen. So, <clears throat> consistency is everything. One second. I pray on everything, I stay the same, I never change. Um, and I was praying on um, what to do, and the Spirit was like, make a video. That's how I get my revelation, then I share it with you. And there's always hesitation when you are trying to figure out what's going to happen. And a lot of people are like, well, can I get a pleasant response? Something that's going to benefit me. And if they don't get that, they're like, yeah, I didn't want to hear that. I'm not doing that. I've um, not ever been like that because being who I am, God is more like, excited to play with me like and God's always kind of been like look you can do this or I can provide the motivation for you to want to do this which you're going to choose and I'm like we owe me to and the spirit's like why are you always like worried about things happening to you <laughs> and I'm just like because and the spirit's like, well, when things happen, do I, do you not always come out walking on water? Do you not always come out victorious? And I'm like, yeah. And the spirit was like, they need an explanation. And I'm like, the same one that we've been given and giving and giving and giving and giving. And the spirit's like, come over here. And I'm like, all right. <clears throat> Just explain it to them in terms they can't argue with. And that's the reason why you'll never like see me argue. Because I learn straight from the Holy Spirit and then I accept that as truth. You have to have truth. Otherwise, this is what's going to happen. And you have to get to the root of why the entire world has lost its mind, basically. <laughs> I don't think it's funny, but at the same time, I find it um, proof. And some things you just have to find some enjoyment in. Otherwise, you're just going to sit in your room in a corner broken with this um, mentality of feeling sorry for yourself and um, waiting for something to happen, but you're not understanding what is happening. So if I can shed light on what is happening, that's gonna give you um, something to stand on as far as taking your first steps. So, the scripture basically said that God would pour his spirit on the earth. Well, that's what's happened. And a lot of people get sensations. They just know certain things. And we refer to that as seasons shifting. And I can always feel it. And the more... Um, gifts that God gives me, you have to take the time to learn how to use your gift. And usually when, you, when you're given a gift, you have to exercise it. And that can be um, unpleasant until you get the hang of it and it becomes kind of a, a normal everyday thing. And there are so many that have already been lifted into the air and what that basically means is you have a higher state of consciousness it's not the law of attraction it's nothing like that it's a, um, 
gift slash, um, I'm going to call it memory jogger for people. It's called waking up, being awake. And you start to understand things more and more and you start to, you go through the whole, this world is completely backwards thing. And then you go through the whole, well, this is real. And then that eventually um, leads to you feeling loved by God. And one thing that the spirits always taught me is, A lot of things but um, the biggest thing is God is always good God is always merciful no one is being tormented there are those that have been lifted into the air so to speak and then there are those that are still on the ground as far as their state of consciousness and this is based off um, the desires in their heart So I went through the whole stage of looking at the earth and um, everything everyone's doing, everything everyone believes. And um, what I see is the same thing that happened in the Bible. People used to worship rocks because it had a um, self-serving purpose to worshiping rocks. But then you had a certain people that God was like, all right, the living God is their God. And in order to um, kind of help the people that were worshiping rocks, God would show off for them. And they would be like, we don't want a living God. The people that um, worshipped rocks would mostly say that. And the people sometimes that had a living God would say that too. So God would be kind of like, all right, I get that. And then they would be like, oh, now we want a living God. And it's been this kind of back and forth tugging between um, God's children and God. This has been this way since like, remember, um, with the outpouring of God's spirit on the earth came the Bible, like right on top of it. Because the first thing you have to be able to understand is everything stems from the Bible. And you have to have that truth. That's why it exists. Like if you go out of the Bible, you are going to be on your own path into um, whatever you want to be true. And then whatever you want to be true doesn't mean God says, okay, that's going to be true. You cannot create your own world, basically. And you have to see the Bible as um, a light unto your path, a lamp under your feet, so you can see what you're walking into, what the plan is. And then when you have some type of indication of what you can expect that has already happened, that has already happened, that has already happened, you gain um, more comfort in a situation, whatever that situation happens to be. Now, what also happened is a lot of people um, have connected in some way with another person that is still on the ground. And this is the um, scripture being fulfilled where uh, the scripture said, one will be taken, one will be left. And the, um, the spiritual awareness is kind of like your first step into the heavenly realms. 
you're getting uh, a teaspoon of sharing the mind of Christ, God's mind. And God is kind of showing you things, but other people, they can't see it. And this is based off... Um, the decisions that you've made that pleased God. And if you accept Christ into your heart, you can um, be given that gift. And then it's kind of up to you whether you want to stay pursuing the heavenly things, the things of God, or you can choose to be like, eh, that's not for me. And then you can stay on the earth. So it goes back to Adam and Eve, of course, because what the spirits always um, impressed into me is that in order to help people, they have to understand that the Bible is true. So you have to take it back to Adam and Eve and explain um, why that parable slash real event is not only possible, it's undeniable. And then of course you have to um, avoid the things that are going to disprove that. So, a lot of people, and I've noticed this, I've been looking at um, my prophets and things like that, and I'm just like, what? Why? And you have to get to the root of it, and then you get really, really upset for a second. And then you're just like, all right, well, they're missing out. Like, hopefully they... Because you can control people. I'm not saying you as um, people, but I'm saying God could control people if he wanted to. And one thing that I had to get comfortable with was God will lead people away from people. He'll just be like, look, you're doing good, but this person is trying to lead you off of this path. So I'm just gonna put something over here that that person will make the choice. Hey, I wanna go that way, all right? Well now you're sitting there and you can get back to who you are. And the scripture said, do not be unequally yoked. And that all that really meant and means is don't connect with people that aren't going where you're going. Because you're going to be trying to go this way, they're going to want to go this way, and you're just going to not go anywhere. So, what it also comes down to is once you have the biblical foundation, and again, I'm going to impress this as much as possible, you have the Holy Spirit. That's your truth right there. The Bible plus the Holy Spirit, that's all you need. Because the scripture says that you cannot describe God. It says his ways are higher than your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. So being pulled into that realm, you're going to be different. You're going to see things. The scripture says you'll have visions. The scripture says you'll dream dreams. All of that is happening. And no one can really describe why. So they've come up with all of these terms. And the most common one they're going for is um, mental illness. But that doesn't really make sense because... Even dealing with um, people that are diagnosed with um, SMI or 
any type of mental illness disorder, they seem to be able to discuss matters of importance to them, whether that be money or the things that they need, they can kind of be like, yeah, I need that. And then they may choose to um, seem different again. So you need also to have the solution to those things. And there are um, really angry and um, I'm going to say not really too concerned with the um, happiness of others type of people. And I was asking God, well, why do they exist? And you also have to remember that God created everything and everything was created through God. So, if you have an enemy, that is designed for you to get stronger. So, it's really, really complex learning um, how God is ruling the world and what he expects from um, me and us, basically. And... God will break you. And then when you start following Jesus, you will get broken again. If you can expect that and you know when it's happening, you also know that after God breaks you, he restores you stronger and with more um, either gifts or territory or you get more faith. You can endure when things don't seem um, the way you want them. You just kind of wait for God to show you why they are the way they are. And it has been a time of judgment. God keeps his word. So during this process of um, God's spirit being poured onto the earth, a lot of people looked in the mirror and they started thinking, what's gonna happen to me? Because so much has been going on. And God used that as a way to get people quick, fast back home. Everybody had that sensation, I should go to church. I should go back to church. Now, some chose not to, and some did, and then they were just like, okay. And then when they didn't get what they wanted, or God didn't um, do things that they thought he should do, they fell away. Scripture said that would happen. And what it all came down to is everybody basically said, this is our God, and these are the rules for him. And then God kind of looked at the world like, okay, see how that works out. Because if God did things according to uh, people's understanding, they wouldn't know he was God. And that's been a huge thing that people really don't understand is there's always been um, a wooing period where velvet ropes open for you, everything goes perfect for you. you, you know without a doubt there is the hand of God on your life. And then God's like, okay, that was our little um, dating, so to speak, now let's be married type of thing. And then it's like, okay. Here are um, 
my expectations, which are basically stay with me, <laughs> you know, stay following the Holy Spirit. If it gets hard, I'll give you chances. I'll give you chances. I understand. Talk to me about it. Tell me what you don't like about it. And I'll send a prophet or I'll send you the answer to kind of let you know I'm still with you. There are stages to this whole getting to know God thing. And in exchange for that, I will reveal to you this amazing life that you have already experienced and I'll just lead you through it. Okay. And there was a problem because there was a lot of people that started taking that walk and then tried to replace God with something else and then they go back and forth and they were impacting the um, people that were still trying to take that walk. And at that time, it became a, a okay. Those were viewed as basically unfaithful. And then you had the ones that were really, really, really trying. And then they were picking up bad habits, basically. Kind of like um, that sibling that can impact the other sibling. And that goes back to Cain and Abel. So you also have to look at your life and your house. One, be thankful you have one. And then you need to be looking at it as the Garden of Eden. And you want to protect your house. You want to protect your household. You want to restore God's presence in your home. And then from there, if you are led to go out of your home, you know that God is with you. And I've prayed on it, I've prayed on it, I've prayed on it, like, well, <clears throat> why not just, you know, fix everything like that. And the Spirit says, it's already fixed. It's an individual relationship between the living God and His creation. So each person has their relationship with Jesus Christ, whether they know it or not. It does not matter what people believe. What matters is what they already know. And are they willing and do they have the courage to face the truth? And so many have thought, I can't do this, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I've heard it so many times. And <clears throat> that they have to come up with excuses for this and they have to, you know, I'm like, if you want to, that will, um, make it more intimate between you and God. But, and everybody thinks that's sex and everything. I've, I've spoken to atheists and all kinds of things like that, and they make jokes and everything like that. And, well, God isn't a joke. And that's been um, a huge thing that the Spirit's been kind of telling me, like, the indication of how far people go to make everything convenient and beneficial for them. Essentially saying they want to be their own God. And then getting angry when they do not have the power, ability, or wisdom to do so. So I was praying on this and God was like, so send somebody that doesn't want to be God. Enter Jesus Christ. And the more Jesus Christ was Jesus Christ, the more it became a 
okay, now we have the living God walking around with us. It's not going to end well. <laughs> it's like everybody's mentality. And there, there were different seasons in different cities for different purposes. And um, it was the whole uh, jealousy thing. So you also have to come to the conclusion, the truth that's revealed to you, that Eve had no concept of God until Adam was like, hey, you know that little still small voice in you? That's God. She had no idea she was speaking and looking directly at God. So everything that the Holy Spirit was telling Adam, because scripture says Adam used to walk around in the cool of the day with God. There was a relationship that Adam had with God. And I'm always cautious on how far I take things. That's why I'm pausing on to make sure that I'm saying the things that I'm supposed to say. Because, I mean, I can teach from the Christian standpoint. I can do that. I can teach from a, we need to be more expansive because people have um, doubts and questions. I think that is going to be more of a, um, well, I don't think, I just, this is what God's telling me to say. And saying things like that can freak people out. So rather than try and please both, I'm just going to do what God tells me to do and then let the Holy Spirit reveal the truth to you. And in this way, there's no um, manipulation or anything like that. So it's going to be me. And then the situation got flipped upside down because the whole point was God was trying to show Adam and Eve how much he loved them because they all came from him. And if you know God God is very playful, but you'll know that you're playing with God. Because God has no fear. God has seen everything. Everything's already happened. And the scripture says there is one God. And what people need is clarity. And they need it not... So derived from the mind of a, a man. They need it straight from God. So that's what's been going on. And then the reason numbers exist and things like that is because you can't really mistranslate numbers. You can't really use numbers to um, benefit yourselves. And that's one of the biggest things you want to look for is what day is it? What's the number end in? What's the number begin with? And then you'll get an indication of what season you might be entering or coming out of. And I was praying on it, and the spirit was like, look up February 29th. And I was like, okay. Because I had just um, looked up some other things, and I was studying some things, and I was like, wow, how long have these signs been happening? And I was just looking at, like, how long has this been? It's been going on since Adam and Eve. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So that separation right there. Um is a parable. The pomegranate uh, represents that one thing the Holy Spirit tells you not to do, or to do and you don't do, either way. Which is why Adam 
didn't eat, that represented for a second what you're um, supposed to do that you don't do. And then there was the, and then Eve ate, that represented what you do, what you're not supposed to do. And then from there, God used that to kind of explain why you have man and woman and why things are the way they are and why when you are in a marriage, things can go um, wrong and why it seems like everything was fine and then this happened. It represents the absence of God in your household or being placed first as the authority in your marriage of what will inevitably happen. People are expecting marriages to work without Jesus as the authority and it's not ever going to happen. And one of the biggest things that breaks people is their significant other no longer being connected to them, no longer being um, like intimate and trustworthy and honest to where they are in their own little world together, they have one flesh. So part of what also happened is the one flesh thing got real 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 and it's been happening over what people call uh, days and months and years to the point where god was so in is so intent on proving to people that it matters who they sleep with it matters who they allow into their um, immediate circles and families that the scripture came to life in the way of your spouse can erase your happy moments. And if you are choosing to stay with that spouse, then that is your choice. But God never removes something unless God is going to give you something. Well, nine times out of ten, if God removes something, that means it wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. And um, man is basically created to gravitate towards the pleasant things that make man happy. But the first thing that is supposed to make man happy is his relationship with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ, and it's been said, in the scripture that if you've seen the father you've seen me I and the father are one so when people view their life more like okay step by step what am I supposed to do to please God thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven which means everywhere you step, you can bring heaven with you. And Jesus modeled that. And um, the perfect life, the perfect way to be happy has already been documented. That doesn't mean everything is always going to be um, easy. Some seasons are harder than others. They prepare you so that when you get to where God is leading you, you're already a pro at it. And then you give the glory to God because people are like, how does this person do this? How does these things always work out for him or her? And what that does 
it gives you the example that no matter what you want to believe, there is a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. So you also have so many people in all these other countries having dreams of Jesus Christ and this and this and this. And the scripture is always going to confirm that. So when you have so much evidence of the truth, then God gets to the conclusion these people um, want God in their life. These people do not. And then you have the people that know that there's a God and they're in the same exact category. You want to reestablish your holy people. And everybody is mixed in to um, different households. And there's another um, younger generation that is um, being raised up. So you have a lot of things going on in the spiritual realm where those, the younger generation needs teachers to um, explain to them what was never explained to them. And there has been, um, when that generation, basically the one um, before mine, so to speak, just completely decided they weren't going to um, teach their children by modeling it in the home, by actually following Jesus and putting God first. That was kind of the, okay, there's the line right there. This ends now. Because the result of it was um, a whole bunch of hurt, and broken people that had no idea how to um, basically survive. And they got mixed in with other uh, people. So they rubbed off on each other. <clears throat> and God saw that and God was like, all right. And That was always going to happen because the scripture said it would. It's always happened. God's always been like, do not mix with these people. If they come to you, because God always has some people in a group of people that are still his people. And they're there to kind of raise up in the midst of those people and profess him and then start being the example so that they can help those people. Like God never abandons anybody. And I, I know that God's um, enduring patience and mercies and kindness are just unfathomable to people. His understanding and the way he looks at things is just like, probably scare most people, but once you have the comfort of um, knowing when the Holy Spirit is either convicting you or leading you, even as scary as it can be to um, take the walk that you um, have already taken, but God's kind of just like, remember you used to do this, remember that's why you are good at this and that's why you're excited about this and people have been excited about so many things whether that be truth or not and I've been wondering why people have made these videos and wrote the things they've written and I've just been like 
in awe of just why. And then you gotta remember people get on fire for Jesus and you might use them for one thing. And then they come out of the spirit and they no longer uh, want to um, have the discipline and patience it is to learn more. So they just go off on their own, do whatever they want. So you no longer use them. So they might have one thing that is just truth, pow. And then they get excited by that and they don't want to um, follow the spirit, but they still want to um, continue receiving the accolades of men or just creating things and they just do whatever they want. That's, that's scripture, that's what people do. And then you also have to remember others have um, mindsets where they're like, well, I can use this to better my position either financially or however they, they wanna do that. So you don't use those people at all, but they see examples of this and they're like, well, that seems like a easy way to uh, further their agenda. So a lot of people have kind of preyed on Christianity. They've been like, it makes money, better's my life. It's like having an actor. They're like, I just have to um, learn the lingo and then I can say whatever I want. If I say things that people want to hear, that gets me more money, that gets me more this. So you've had false prophets and false teachers. That's probably never going to change unless you know the truth. And then even then, people, scripture says they will be fans of um, ear tickling preachers, basically. And they will be followers of those. Because anybody that's been led into the truth, God's prophets were normally very few, and no one liked to hear what they had to say. Mostly. <laughs> Mostly. Uh, sometimes there were some that uh, God was like, tell those people good job. And God used them back and forth. <sighs> But they almost all no longer wanted to be on the earth. And that was God's way of pretty much saying, all right, you were created for a purpose. This is what makes you really happy. Because you speak to God directly. And God speaks to you directly. So that puts you above kings. That puts you above everything else. Because God is just like, this is my chosen one. And um, then God's like, do not touch my anointed. And it's also been um, a whole thing of a lot of people's actions and words against his prophets and people were not kind. So God raised up and took care of that situation. So everything in the scripture, you cannot be like, well, this part and this part and this part and this part. But then you get to the scary parts of God's personality and you're like, I... So, <clears throat> I always, I look back sometimes and that's really not a good idea, but I do. And I look at what has been removed from my life and um, I take a look at my life like everybody else, and I'm just like, you really get broken of, this is what I want to do, versus this is what I really want to do. I just don't want to wait and keep taking these baby steps. Because God never has anything negative planned for anybody. You have to look at it like you are already on a path to something. And whether that be very, very unpleasant in your life, 
or really, really, really pleasant in your life, you're on a path to it. What God tries to do in your life is show you how to get on the really, really, really pleasant path. And so many people will speak because they want it to be true. And I, I, why does everybody lie so much? But if it doesn't line up with the scripture and it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ, it has no truth in it. And so many people have had people turn against them and start telling them things and they seem like those things make sense. Well, they do make sense to a person with no faith that doesn't know God, doesn't know Jesus. That makes perfect sense. And the scripture says the gospel will be like nonsense to those that are perishing. It doesn't mean necessarily that they are dying in the physical, but their spirit as far as the wisdom and understanding that they could be given, they're not getting. So they're not being lifted into the air. Heaven is a reward for those